All right, we're taking a look at autoencoders. Let's dive into this. Here's some nice pictures. Let's go to the Wikipedia page. That's a type of artificial neural network. Yeah, we're gonna make a neural network and for efficient data encoding. Uh, it's more like a, a representation code. That's what it's really good for. A picture of it or a simple one. And there's a couple different kinds. There's sparse, denoising. We're just gonna make a basic code for now. And here's a input input diagram. Okay, let's uh, let's get into it. Let me just code up the uh, the basic stuff that we need. We're going to use MNIST. All right, that's the data that we're looking at. Uh, this is, you know, a bunch of images, and uh, let's run an autoencoder on this. So we will feed it one of these images, and it's got to produce the output. So here's the setup code. Here's what the images look like. Let's get into writing that auto. First autoencoder that we're going to make is just going to be super simple. Uh, let's just make it fully connected, uh, a dense layer, and see how that does. Okay, we just reshaped the data. Uh, we need it to be 28 by 28 by one. So let's do that and let's normalize. All right, that's our model. Let's see if that compiles. While that's compiling, let's write the loss and, uh, oh, it didn't compile. Let's check out what it says. There we go, great, because uh, we have to tie it to the previous value. Okay, let's, um, let's take this encoder and give it a loss function, compile it, and then run it and see what it makes. Okay, now we're ready to fit the data. Let's do it. Okay, we see here that we're setting the X to be the training set and the Y to also be the training set because we're trying to recreate the input. Let's run that. We are going to create uh, <clears throat> the, the output. We're gonna uh, find out what it makes. We're gonna do predict and let's do the for 25 and let's plot those. So garbage, yeah, certainly didn't get anything good. So let's do this for 10 epochs, let's see how much better it gets. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's a little bit better. So let's do that some more. Let's try actually changing this to Adam and let's fit it some more. Well, that's going down pretty fast. So let's just let that run. All right, there we go. That's our autoencoder. It looks like it's working pretty well. Um, comparing this to uh, this, it doesn't look it doesn't look great. Let's let's compare it uh, side by side. So instead of this five by five, let's make it uh, six by six. And so uh, we don't want to enumerate through all of them. All right, so that's our original five, and that's the new five. Uh, it's, you know, let's make that big so we can take a look at it. You know, it's it's not all that nice, but uh, it's it's all right, pretty good. Let's see if we can make it better. Uh, so let's go here to our encoding and decoding and, uh, and, and see if we can make it a bit better. We're just using dense layers here. Let's use convolution.
All right, so this is how we can upscale. Um, there's also just like an upscale call I'm looking for. Oh, cool, that worked. Okay, so uh, our encoding layer does a convolution uh, and then max pool, then another convolution, max pool, another convolution, and flattens it. And we have a, a reasonably sized small uh, encoding layer. And then uh, our decoding layer reshapes it so that it's uh, four by four again, and then up samples it to eight by eight, does a convolution. Oh, uh, this will not be 60 by 60. We need to do this one more. So this will be eight by eight. Yeah, great, we got the output correct. So that works. Now let's do this down here. Let's stop it and just verify that indeed, you know, it's not uh, it's not when it's first initialized, not particularly doing anything well. What well, that looks really good. Okay, uh, let's just rebuild this. Yeah, oh, and we can see that it's a new model. Uh, let's just compile it and look, it should be garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. Okay, so it's garbage. Um, let's just do one epoch and then show the results. Well, you, would you look at that? When we use convolution on an image, it looks better, huh? Funny that. Uh, okay, let's zoom in on this guy. So this is the real, and this is what it recreated. You can see it's kind of fuzzied out here. It's kind of fuzzied out here, fuzzied. Um, so let's play with that. Let's take a look. Uh, there's this paper I read. Uh, it had a really cool trick on uh, trying to get rid of this fuzziness. So something we could try for images, and it works really well for images, is we can try a different loss function. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like if we use, instead of mean squared error, which is MSE, we're gonna use mean average error, All right? So uh, mean squared error is big, big errors get the square of their error and tiny errors get almost no error. So let's let's just take a look at this guy for a second. This this four. So it's not it's not the the machine learning isn't really committing to putting the edge of that four there. Why might it do that? Well, imagine it's 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 uh, considering whether to put a line here or a bit here or a bit over here. And if it misses, instead of drawing the line right there, if instead it just draws the line right here, and you're looking at mean squared error, that's huge. That's like all of this is just dead, dead wrong. And all of this that it didn't draw is just dead, dead wrong. And so instead of it just kind of blurs that area, it's much better off because half of the error here and half of the error here, half squared plus half squared is a lot less than one squared plus one squared, way less. Uh, so it's uh, it's encouraged to to divide its error and blur stuff out. And so we don't get great images. We can see that these are all kind of blurry on the edge. So we don't want nice crisp edges. Well, with mean average error, um, it it's the same error, whether it's off by a bit or off right on. But we'll see that there's some other bad artifact when we do that. Well, I was totally wrong. Looks great. Okay, there we go. Mean average error for images. Ta-da! That's it. There's uh, an autoencoder. Looks fantastic. Um, but we should be able to do cool things with autoencoders. We should be able to do something like use the autoencoder to uh, make this phi uh, morph into this three. Let's do that. So uh, the way we're gonna do that is Okay, I think I need to rejig this and yeah. Okay, let me recode this. So basically what I need to do is I need to be able to um, get this uh, encoder to be able to encode the data. And I also need to be able to send, uh, I need another model to be able to send directly to this decoder here. But the decoder is uh, connected to the encoder. So let me just decouple those and uh, I'll do that quickly.
All right, that looks good for the autoencoder. Let's look at the encoder. That looks right for the encoder. Let's look at the decoder. That looks right for the decoder. Great. And they all use the shared weights. So when I train one, uh, they all get trained. Let's redo that training. Hmm, that didn't look right. Let's reinitialize that. Okay, those images look great. So now uh, this is image one, this particular five, and uh, this three is image, uh, sorry, this is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven. So let's uh, get the embedding of these two, and, uh, and then we'll blend it, and then we'll graph that and we'll see uh, what that looks like. And it should look like it morphs from one to the other. Uh, actually, I'm kind of nervous about that. Let's do this three to this three. Let me get that going. Okay, let's just uh, make sure that we got the right ones and let's reprint them out. Oh, right, uh, X train. Yep, that's the first one, and let's do the second one. Okay, uh, you know what? Forget it. Let's go with this five to this three. Let's see how well of a, or this eight for the three. To, okay, well, let's go from the five to the three. So the five should be uh, zero. Let's call this first five. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is linearly interpolate that five, the embeddings from the five to the three, and then we're gonna display them. Let's do it. Okay, so now let's uh, convert those images from the embeddings, uh, those, those embeddings that we just created, let's convert them into images using the decoder. And now let's display them. Okay, uh, yeah, it took these three and it started to uh, modify it a bit and then make it very five-like and then connect it. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Let's, uh, let's change it from this three to this three. So what we should see is we should see this three, if the autoencoder did a good job of capturing the meaning of the three, it should just like shift the three over as opposed to just like depixelize it and repixelize it. So let's try that. So this one was seven, nine, 10, 12, right? I think it's 12, seven, let's just, well, I know I said it's, uh, so let's do that. Let's show that one. So there we go, it has that first three and it just starts shifting it very nicely to what the new three looks like. Here we go, let's just get a little bit better of a, oh, I think I reshaped this one, two, come on, eight, let's do three. What, what am I doing wrong? There we go. Um, so here we can see it's definitely sloped this way and then definitely comes back and slopes that. All right, there we go. Uh, auto encoders and some use for them. You know, we can uh, use them to change uh, an image into some other image. All right, let me just play around with a couple others while uh, the video ends.